Welcome to Power Up, the uptime podcast focused on the new hot off the press technology that can change the world. Follow along with me, Alan Hall, and Itosaur's Phil Totaro as we discuss the weird, the wild, and the game-changing ideas that will charge your energy future. Our first idea is from Goldwind, and it is a concept where they have a specialized coil pipe system for liquid cooling in wind turbines, mostly offshore, it appears, that is designed to handle the rotation between the nacelle and the tower. So you can think about all this coiled tube in the tower itself, and that the cell is spinning around. So it keeps everything organized <laughs> so it doesn't twist, bend, and kink where the, the fluid flow would stop. Uh, Phil, this one's a little interesting to me because I haven't seen a lot of cooling happening in towers, but obviously Goldwyn uh, wants to proceed with this idea to for, mostly for their offshore turbines, it looks like. Yeah, this is designed for larger machines where they're going to leverage um, either using the tower as a heat sink or some other down tower mechanism where um, they can dump uh, waste heat and theoretically minimize the size of the radiator that they have on the nacelle. Um, and keep in mind that Goldwind, because they're using a permanent magnet generator, they have different um, requirements up tower for um, you know for the the magnet cooling uh, and stator cooling. So what's kind of fascinating about this to me is that you know you've got. Um, Certainly for, for transmitting, you know, electrical uh, current and things like that, you, you have things like slip rings. Um, you even have kind of hydraulic slip rings uh, when you want to be able to move, you know, from a, from a rotating frame of reference to a fixed frame of reference. You, you can use kind of a, a, an equivalent of a hydraulic slip ring to, to pass fluid that way. This is literally like a twist loop. Um, the same way that we have kind of an electrical cable twist loop in um, the upper part of a, the tower in the cell, um, but it's specifically designed for liquid coolant. Uh, and so, you know, kudos to them for kind of creativity and ingenuity. Um, whether or not this is going to be more efficient than a nacelle mounted radiator, I'm not quite sure. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see some feedback or some data on that, but it's, uh, it's definitely a unique and kind of fascinating way of, um, you know, developing a, a liquid based cooling system and, and implementing it in, uh, uh a way that's going to help them, um, you know, address other consideration, design considerations, like wanting to minimize the, um, the volume and the, the size and frankly, the weight uh, of an up tower radiator or an cell mounted radiator. Our next idea is from Wabin Properties, and it is a concept for using weather data, in particular, more widespread weather data, coupled with performance of a wind turbine over time to create a, a predicted model for the power output under certain weather conditions. And this idea seems to be driven, Phil, from grid restoration or black start scenarios where they need to turn the grid on, restarting the grid, and they need to know what power is going to be delivered with some relative accuracy. That's hard to do for wind turbines unless you have a predictive method, which is what Wabin is talking about. Yeah, so just to just to clarify for everybody too, Woven Properties is like an IP holding subsidiary of Enercon uh, in Germany. So um, this is the the vehicle that they use to kind of capture and, and monetize their intellectual property. Um, now, the as for the idea itself, what's a bit interesting and, and unique about this is the fact that they are taking uh, historical uh, turbine data and park data, which that's nothing new to be able to develop some kind of forward-looking forecast. Um, similarly, you know, you can look at, you know, actual global or even local uh, weather forecasting data um, and use that to help develop a power forecast. That uh, There's plenty of people out there doing that sort of work in, in the industry. We know uh, a few of them on, on the Uptime Wind Energy podcast. So um, the what's unique and interesting, though, about the this Enercon invention is the fact that they're combining this, um, both of these kind of um, methods for developing a, uh, a power forecast that allows you to get a narrower confidence interval 
um, by leveraging both the historical data combined with the um, you know the the weather forecasting data from both individual turbines and the global uh, or regionally focused data uh, that kind of surrounds the uh, the entire wind park uh, that they have. So. Um, Anything that they can do to, to try and improve that confidence interval is, is a good thing, uh, as, as many people who work in power forecasting know. This is a very clever way of approaching uh, this kind of a technical challenge where you want to be able to improve the, the confidence interval on uh, your weather forecast and your power forecast. Our fun patent of the week comes from Samuel Applegate. And this is a, a, a kind of a unique alarm clock idea. Now, you may have seen something similar more recently called the slappy, which is like this rotating hand that slaps your face when you're supposed to wake up when your alarm bell goes off and your heart don't like waking up. This is a much calmer system than the, than the slapping hand bit. It's like a grid of uh, that's suspended above the sleeper, and there's a bunch of strings hanging down in a grid pattern. And at the end of these strings is are corks, and w when you're allowed to sleep, this cork system lifts off and doesn't bother you. As soon as the alarm bell goes off, it sort of lowers down. So it's kind of like you're surrounded by a bunch of corks and strings, like you're being caught in a cobweb. So it's it's trying to wake you up slowly, not to really alarm you up. However, I wonder if this idea was really ever effective because hard sleepers can sleep through anything. This device seems like it's not going to be enough to wake up the, the difficult sleeper. And, and I'll tell you what, Alan, this, this uh, invention was actually conceived of and the patent was granted back in 1882. Uh, so, you know, the fact that something that was that kind of unique and original, you know, more than 100 years ago, uh, could influence, you know, some of the some of the IP and the technology of of today, uh, and and the slappy, <laughs> which I do not use, by the way. I, I actually normally wake up with the sun in the morning. Uh, it's a, a much more pleasant way to to do things. Um, but you know, for those people that uh, might be heavier sleepers, I don't know. This this could work. The slappy could work. Uh, you know, but it depends. I guess it depends on uh, how heavy a sleeper you are. You're never going to beat that rooster in your window. That's the best. <laughs> <laughs>